Good morning, everyone. Today is day 74, and we're going to be talking about Let's Get Real. I love this lesson. I, I really do. I mean, I've learned so much in it, and I want God to re-examine my spirit, my heart, and just let there be no fake in there, no hypocrisy, nothing that would hinder the flow of Him working in my life. And here Jesus is back with the scribes. He in the same setting. It's like we're we're just the whole chapter twelve is all about Him talking to this particular group, and and particularly the scribes specifically. And the scribes are religious scholars that know that the law they know and understand these things but today I want us to look a little bit further into their life as we study this section in Mark chapter 12 verse 35 I want us to pray first Lord Jesus thank you for your precious word and thank you for the power that's in your word and I pray that 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 word that anointed word of God would begin to examine us individually, that we would look in deep and don't let there be anything that is fake or hypocritical in any way, Lord. Just change us and help us to truly love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength, Lord. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I, I really think this lesson ties in to our last lesson. Uh, and, and if you did not write... Um, those verses and post them on your bathroom mirror in your bedroom, I encourage you to go back and do it. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5 is just a remember, remembrance, a reminder to us all of the power of keeping the most important thing right at the forefront. Okay? So, let's go to verse 35. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said, By the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he then his son? So Jesus was challenging the scribes to about this setting of scripture that they were familiar with. But I love the next portion. It says, And the common people heard him gladly. This was so beautiful because while the religious rulers and leaders rejected Jesus, the common people connected with him. And Jesus connected with them. And he, his compassion flowed. His love flowed because they wanted change. They saw the need for change. It's interesting that it was not the lawless mob who killed Jesus. It was the religious leaders. That that statement right there really spoke to me um, in my own spirit. Because I know, you know, as a mom, I, I, I'm a religious leader in my home. And, you know, in my neighborhood, I, I'm a Christian. And people look at my life and I thought, God, please let me represent you well don't let me don't let me crucify you again with my bad attitude or 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 negative you know thoughts or actions or deeds but lord jesus help me to when they see you let them see when they see me let them see you so this this really spoke to me but anyway i i love that common people just ordinary people that's who jesus connects with people that are willing to listen verse 38 says and he said unto them in his doctrine beware of the scribes now this is where it gets really serious for these religious leaders which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at fet- feasts which devour widows houses and for a pretense make long prayers these shall receive greater damnation. Now I want to stop here and, and I want to reread this in the message version. So this is just what I like to look at as a way to study it through um, the 20th century eyes or 21st century. 
So let's go to Mark chapter 12. Verse, we're just going to do 38 through 40 in the message version. And it says, watch out for the religious scholars. They love to walk around in academic gowns, preening in the radiance of public flattery, basking in prominent positions, sitting at the head table at every church function. And all the time, they are exploiting the weak and helpless. The longer their prayers, the worse they get, but they'll pay for it in the end. And y'all, I mean, Jesus just got real straight about that. I mean, he put them in their place. Because here's the deal. The way of Christ is to take care of the widows and to make sure that the prayers are sincere and to be humble and allow others to sit in the in the uppermost parts of the the chief seats in the uppermost rooms and and to give glory to God not to self and to appear humble not proud and costly and extravagant that's the way of Christ and they had it all wrong it was all about it was all about how they looked it was all about how that people received them. They loved prominence. They loved fame and wealth and status. And that's something Jesus was completely turned off. And so in our own lives, you know, we want to look inward. We, There are still people, religious leaders, even today, that carry that same pharisaical attitude. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that you your pastor doesn't act that way. <laughs> and a true man or woman of God is going to carry a spirit of humility because that is the spirit of Christ, a spirit of love. They're going to they're going to uh, reach down. It's like it says, and the common people heard him gladly. Jesus connected with the common people. So so the true religious leaders are going to connect with the common people. They're going to connect with people that maybe have, they don't have a lot to offer, but they are willing to listen gladly. Okay. So in this morning, we're going to, we're going to pray again. And I want you to self-examine. It's easy to go to a church service. I've done it before. And you hear your pastor preach or an evangelist and you think of all these people that need to hear that message. Do you know that's really a pharisaical attitude? And I've had it before. But what I want us to do today is I want us to self-examine. Because what happens is when we begin to examine our own heart and our own spirit, God will show us those areas of pride that can ruin our walk with God and our reputation with others. And when that happens... If we will humble ourselves before the Lord, then He will exalt us in due time. The Bible says that. So this morning, we'll, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for this lesson today. And we pray, God, we pray that if there are areas of our life that are proud and haughty and self-righteous, God, that you would take that out, just expose that in our life and and help us to be clean and pure before you and and sincere, God and humble. And this morning I pray over every student that we would not allow ourselves to walk in any way as the Pharisees did, but to be right with you, to be real, to truly be real in Jesus precious name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and listen. If you have a religious leader in your life, a spiritual authority that walks in humility, just say an extra prayer of thanks to God for that. And be sure you go to them and tell them, thank you for being real. God bless. Have a wonderful day.